pop star Duff McKagan, a founding member of Guns N' Roses. He was the bass player when Guns N' Roses was the biggest band on the planet. He toured the world, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that's before you get into the other bands he's played in, Velvet Revolver, Loaded, Walking Papers. But there's another group that really means the world to him. And that's the 12th man. Dub is from Seattle. He's always been a huge fan of the Seahawks, and he loves going to games at CenturyLink Field. He's hoping to be at MetLife Stadium on Super Bowl Sunday, and he wrote a guest column about his search for tickets on NFL.com. So now we know, Dub, why you are here on NFL AM. It's not just to join Sean and I. It's to get yourself some tickets to the Super Bowl. That's, uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a side, <laughs> side reason I'm here. I didn't know that picture I, that my nephew took with my BlackBerry would be everywhere. Is it? They wanted a picture, that picture they just showed with all of the at the game. Yeah, and Blackberries don't take the best <laughs> photos. But it's on NFL.com. Now it's on TV. Awesome. And they didn't even Photoshop it for you. Not they at all. They didn't even do you a solid. Okay, so they could make up for it by giving you tickets to the Super Bowl. How is your quest for those tickets? Look, I'm not asking for free tickets. I'll pay face <laughs> value. For them, yeah. I'll pay for them. Um, it's been a thing, really, for sure. Uh, Jerry Cantrell and I guitar player from Alice in Chains, we've been, like, really since we've known each other, 89 or so, or 90, we're both hardcore Hawks fans, and um, even through, like, he and I both had some, some darker years in there, in, in the earlier 90s, and there was, like, one thing, at least in my life, that was solid, and that was the Hawks. I knew they'd play on Sundays at one, and when the rest of my life was chaos and did, I didn't know it was real at times. Um, the Hawks were the one thing that, that kind of were that solid thing. And Jerry and I have shared in this, and we went to the Super Bowl together in 06. And uh, we went to the game last Sunday um, against San Francisco. And that was the most amazing event I'd been to since I saw Led Zeppelin in 1977 when I was 13. So that's the life-changing experience that you're talking about because you were at the game last Sunday and you compared it to a life-changing experience that you had. It was just like being part of an audience of something like that. And I, it's really hard to explain. It was it was a football game. I've been to football games. But this was, it was more on the line, of course. But uh, the way that the, the 12th man and this thing that we built, and I can say I'm part of that. I can say we because I am part of it. Um, it took over, like in the second half, the 12th man. Not just the noise. It wasn't the noise. It's just like a, I don't know, like the, like when I saw Led Zeppelin, the, the band and the crowd became one mm -hmm. thing. And it was just sort of floating. And the rest of the world just stopped. And there was that gig. And that's what kind of happened last Sunday. Yeah, we just saw the video right there of uh, Richard Sherman. What, what do you feel like, or what do you think about all the attention he's been getting so far? Like throughout this whole process and the big rant that he had you know, last week. What do you think about that? I, he, he, Sherman's my guy, you know, like these are, I guess if you're a 12th man, like these are your guys. And of course, if we got an outspoken guy on our team, it being Seattle, the intellectual right. city, of course we have the smartest guy in the room. That's, <laughs> that's our outspoken guy. He, he's smarter than you or me. I, I loved it. <laughs> I, I absolutely loved it. So. I, I think, you know, these emotional guys, he really is a smart dude. I, I was at the game, so I didn't see the thing. I got a text from a friend of mine who's a Patriots fan, and he's like a sports purist, and the text was, oh, shame on Sherman. I'm like, what? <laughs> and uh, so we got, I got home and saw it, and um, of course, like everybody says, he could have said it that he says. I could I could have said it differently. Yeah. But he, you see the, the the thing you guys ran, that uh, mic up. The press conference. No, the mic oh, up portion, yes. yes. And you kind of see how quickly that was, that... Aaron Andrews came with the mic. I mean, he basically turned around. Where the mic was right there. Right there. Yeah. And, I mean, if I were to be mic'd up like that, right after some of the gigs I played, especially at when I was 25 or 24, God knows what would have came out of my mouth. <laughs> so, um, you know, whatever. I, he's, a good, he's a good dude. This whole team is uh, uh, awesome mm -hmm. guys, and I got their back no matter what. Yeah, Richard Sherman, he's been on our show several times, and he's always been a great guest for us. Um, I want to go back to Super Bowl 40 because the Seahawks, that's their only appearance in a Super Bowl. They lost that game. But that is something that kind of really elevated the 12th man. Tell us a little bit about what you saw from that. I'd say it did. Um, well, I'm, 
So we got tickets for that game. Kind of like I'm trying to get tickets now. We got, it was an NFL guy and we got, we didn't know we were going to sit. We got these tickets as it turned out, surrounded by Steelers fans, but we were down, we were close. And uh, it, it seemed like the Seahawks were just matriculating down the field at will at the beginning of that game. It's like, well, this is going to be a blowout. You know, we were pretty stoked, pretty happy. And um, then the, the flags started getting thrown, and they were all getting thrown against us, it seemed like. I know there's Steelers fans right now going, yeah, you got to bring that up again. <laughs> but it was, if you're a Seattle fan, it just seemed like par for the course. Mm -hmm. We weren't that sexy national story. If we were going to win the Super Bowl, it would have been, we wouldn't have sold as many ads on TV. You know, that's what we feel like in Seattle, anyhow. But you're feeling like this year is the year. Now is the time. I think because of that Super Bowl 40, was that 40? That was already eight mm -hmm. years Super ago. Wow, 40. yeah. Um, uh, time flies. Um, right? So we we um, we went home. I think in that 12th man really started to grow. Like, nobody's going to pay attention to us. We will pay attention to us. And uh, uh, we're alone up there in the Northwest. Our little, some of us still live in teepees, you know, in lumberjacks and all that stuff. Uh, and, uh, and, it feels right this year, and I don't know what that is. I'm going. I got a plane ticket. Okay, Jerry so we and have, I have a plane ticket. We have a plane ticket. Jerry and I are going. We have a place to stay. I think we might have tickets at this point. I don't want to make this, like, I, people wrote into the NFL.com um, column I wrote that came out Friday. Like, I can't believe that guy. Yeah, it's a rich guy. He can afford anything. I don't know why people think I'm a rich guy. It's I've got kids and, you know, wife and kids and... We're just looking for tickets. I think we got them today. I All think right. I'm it is fun sure. to see your journey, though, and you'll keep us posted. I'll keep you posted on the journey. It's just probably like anybody else's journey, except, you know. I well, thank you for I coming in, representing your team.